Hey, real quick, right before getting started, this is the second video in my KOTOR playthrough. My first video went over Terrace, so watch that one at your own risk because I didn't really know how to work the mic yet, but I also dumped the Jim, Sith, and Rogue Vader bit because I didn't like it. So, enjoy the video! Also, if I sound funny, I've been stuffed up. I'm getting over a cold lately, so work with me on that. As the saying goes, nobody hates Star Wars more than Star Wars fans. Well, with KOTOR, it's no different. For people who claim to be the only true fans of Star Wars, KOTOR fans love to argue about just how terrible their favorite game really is. If you were to believe people on social media, Terrace, Dantooine, Manon, Half of Korriban, and the Rakatan planet before the Star Forge should all have been scrapped from the game entirely. But if you watch my Terrace video to the end, then you know that I put it somewhere in the B category. Uh, because, I mean, really the only part I didn't like was the underworld. The rest of the planet I, I felt was very engaging and entertaining. There really wasn't a whole lot I could complain about. I don't know why people get bored with it. So myself, I don't have any major bones to pick with most of the planets, but the Jedi in the game are pretty stupid but I'll get into that. Dantooine starts the same way that most of these do. I land on the planet and I'm immediately harassed by a lower life form. You there, Padawan. Why are you not wearing the customary robes of the Jedi? I'm told that the council is waiting to meet with me. And one of the first things I found out from them is that they basically have no authority outside of Dantooine itself. Yes, the High Council of the Jedi Order is on Coruscant. But we are the council in charge of the training facility here on Dantooine. So why is this small training council in charge of this tiny facility the ones that are sending me on a galaxy-saving mission? Why not send me to Coruscant? Matter of fact, why were they the ones to train Bastille and send her, a Padawan, to lead a mission to capture Revan? That's like if the hunt for Bin Laden was coordinated and executed by a drill sergeant and trainees. I get that she's naturally gifted and has an incredible command for the Force, but it would have made a lot more sense if she had been sent to Coruscant early instead of Dantooine for training. I don't know. Fellow nerds, help me out. What am I missing here? The Council agrees to train me and Vrook begins to berate me unprovoked, as he does. Are you certain Revan is truly dead? What if we undertake to train this one and the Dark Lord should return? Sometimes foreshadowing is relatively obvious. After that, they send me away so they could deliberate, and I decide it's time to upgrade some of my weapons. After all, who needs a lightsaber when you have Snasiki's blade? I just wish that I could get more than one. Don't judge me. But as long as I'm here duplicating things, might as well get some more strength belts and Brezhik's armbands. Don't judge me, because this is still a gains run after all. When I go back to talk to the council, Vander starts talking to me normally, but his body language is like really angry, which is just the cutest thing ever. Like, look at him, look at his little fist waving at me. Look at him go. Around this time is when the Jedi's false sense of righteousness starts to show its cracks. The Sith hunt the Jedi down like animals ambushing and assassinating our brothers wherever they are found. Wow, I can't imagine the Jedi ever committing such a hyenas crime. Truly, the Sith are the ultimate evil. I bet they'd even kidnap someone and wipe their minds so that they can use them as an unwitting tracker purely for their own gain. I can't imagine a harsher sentence than being brainwashed to do someone else's bidding. Good thing the Jedi would never do something like that. They ask me some questions expecting the truth for some reason. Like, look at my face and tell me that you would believe anything that I would have to say. Do I look like someone that wouldn't raise the price of penicillin or scam my YouTube audience for millions just because I can? We fear it is only a matter of time until they discover even this hidden refuge. If you're so worried about being discovered, why not move to Coruscant? What's the point of this tiny little training center out in the middle of nowhere? It's not like you're doing anything to help the people here anyways, but I'll get into that later. The council has decreed that you and Bastila must investigate the ancient ruins you dreamed of once the council deems you ready. Perhaps there you will find some clue, some explanation of how Revan and Malak were corrupted, and perhaps there you shall find a way to stop them. A clue? What clue? You know what I'm looking for, you liars. Just tell me. But that, that's enough of that dialogue. I got more I gotta get into. They end up running me through some basic training, and it turns out I'm the chosen one. No surprise there. They ask me a few questions to determine my Jedi class, and I decide that the best solution to pretty much every problem is to fight and kill. You are in combat with a dark Jedi allied with the Sith. There is a pause in the combat. What do you do? 
Yes, I suspected as much. From there, I'm given a quest to cleanse a grove here on Dantooine, but everything is left intentionally vague. I'm sure the Jedi would give me all the necessary information, though. It's not like they would send a half-trained Jedi apprentice into a potentially life-threatening situation that might end up turning a bad situation worse without telling him. No, no, no. They, they would never do something like that in all their infinite wisdom. I'm sure it's just a matter of removing some cursed rock or something. The ancient grove once used for deep meditation by the Jedi is now tainted. You must journey into the grove and confront the true source of the darkness. Anyways, after that, it's time for me to get to know my companions a little bit better. An 80 kilometer plunge through the atmosphere, dodging and weaving, the outside of my armor glowing like the sun with the heat of re-entry. And with barely 30 meters to spare, I twisted and skimmed the surface, firing at the giant beam generators that were in my path. The explosion from that sent shock waves that leveled the entire complex around it. It was the moment of my life. Candorous is such a badass. Mission tells me about her deadbeat brother and how it was all Lena's fault that he was a broke bum that abandoned her in the lower city. I saw Lena for what she really was, a busty, credit-grubbing cantina rat. She used Griff and took away the only family I had. But who's that walking up to the ship? Why, it's Lena! I'm sure she'll agree 100% with everything that Mission had to say. Mission, is that you? It's me, Lena, remember? I was dating your brother back on Terrace. Don't you start trashing my brother, you cantina rat. Take that back or I'll smack you so hard your head tails will pop off. Griff told me that you didn't want his little sister tagging along. That's why he had to leave me behind. Is that what the hut spawn told you? I wanted you to come with us, Mission. I even offered to pay for your ticket. Why not? I paid for everything else while I was with that freeloader. But he told me you didn't want to leave Terrace. I said we shouldn't even go then. But he said we'd come back and get you after we struck it rich on Tatooine. Just another one of his lies. If you want to talk to Griff, go ahead. Last I heard, he was going to make a fortune working the Zerka Corp mines on Tatooine. But as far as I'm concerned, he's out of my life forever. Griff's better off without you anyway, you table-dancing, brother-stealing, home-wrecker. But Mission, don't worry. I'm sure Garth is out there somewhere. I promise that if ever I run into him, I will make sure he can't abandon you again. Sometimes foreshadowing is relatively obvious. Soon after, I'm approached by a man who asks if the council is ready to see him. Don't know this man? Never met this man. The council has told me nothing about him. So, naturally, I tell him that they're ready to see him. Ah, yes. Thank you, Master Jedi. Stay here, Rilka. I'll be back in an hour or so. Yes, dear. Good luck. Some men just want to watch the world burn. From there, I agree to hunt down some Mandalorians, find a droid sex toy, and I could feel something watching me from above the cliff top. He's just standing there, menacingly! After poaching the majority of the Cathound population and wiping out a couple of Mandalorian groups, I'm approached by an orange Twi'lek asking if I can help solve a murder. Here's the thing about this quest. I hate it. It's boring, repetitive, and stale. I don't need to do it every single playthrough because all it is is back and forth dialogue for like half an hour. I don't need it. I get the updates telling me that Calder Nettic is in fact still dead, and that's all I really need. I move on and keep walking until I find this ugly cat lady and she attacks me all like, I will be your doom! But she's not. She goes down after like two power attacks and then it gets all emo on me. You, you are strong. Stronger than me, even in the darkness. I mean, I guess, but if you don't mind, I have a grove to cleanse. I, Zuhani, shall be your death! Die! So I finish her off and I get back to treating the symptoms of the corruption. While I'm out, I figure I might as well do the Jedi's job and I wipe out the rest of the Mandalorians that have been terrorizing the planet. Now this is what I've been waiting for. I will add your head to those of the other Jedi I have killed and take yet another lightsaber for my own. Baby Grievous won't be able to collect my sabers this time. Thank you, young master. My daughter can now, I think. Rest in peace. Here is the reward I promised you. What? I did not think the Jedi were so greedy. You seem almost Mandalorian. I thank you for what you have done for me, but I have nothing else to give. 
The council will hear of your deeds and your greed. After wandering around a little bit more, I find the lost sex droid that the crazy lady from before told me about. Apparently, he was trying to delete himself because he wanted her to move on and spend time around other human people. She, she tried to treat me as her dead husband. It was not healthy for her. You don't want to know. Of course, this is absolutely reasonable, so I do the most reasonable thing I can think of. I decide to power attack him and tell the lady that he's still out there somewhere, so she spends the rest of her days looking for him. What? what? No. You make her suffer like that? You monster! My droid is still missing. I can feel him like a hole in my aching heart. He's out there still? I must find him. But why didn't she just take the speeder? Some men just want to watch the world burn. When I get back to the Enclave, Belea curses me and the council for introducing Juhani to Snasiki's blade. She had it coming, did she? She had it coming. The Juhani I knew deserved more than this. She deserved more from the Council and more from you. You! You did not even try, did you? Did it even occur to you that Juhani might have been saved? That she might be worth saving? I should kill you for what you've done. And yet, I can't. Can I? I'm a Jedi, and we are sworn to protect all. Even the likes of you. Get, get out of my sight. The very thought of the Council and of you makes me ill. She runs away swearing her revenge. I'm sure I'll never see her again. It is most regrettable that Juhani could not be saved. We in the Council had high hopes for her in the future. In every heart, there is some means of redemption. Could you find none in Juhani? I tell them that there was really nothing I could do and they just believe me. Uh, and then they start telling me about these ruins. But the, to make it worse, they're talking about it like it's the first time they've ever heard of them. Like they sent this other Jedi to go investigate them. Like, again, you know what it is. They're so manipulative. If they're gonna lie to me, at least give me parts of the truth. The secrets to stopping Malak may be hidden within those ruins. You must investigate them and find what Revan and Malak were looking for. After this mini training council in the Outer Rim assigns me, an inexperienced, not even Padawan yet, on a mission that could lead to the key to defeating the Sith, this grumpy old man barges in, talking about, oh, they kidnapped my son. I demand justice. The Central Family is a blight upon Dantooine. They must be punished. The Council will look into this matter, Mr. Matale. You must be patient. My son Shen is missing. How can there be any doubt the Sandrals are to blame? There are other possible explanations for your son's disappearance. Ah, you Jedi are good for nothing but talk. Should you have time, Padawan, you may want to investigate this matter. Vandar asked me to resolve this potential kidnapping situation like it's some small task. Like it's the same as asking me to pick up milk on the way home. Should you have time? Yeah, I'll look into a kidnapping and potential murder if you're too busy for it. Don't worry, it's only your job. But we'll get back to that later. Because I don't want to travel with Bastila. The sooner I can travel with Kandaris to the Wookiee again, the better. So I go into the super secret ruins and solve the dinky puzzles to discover the star map and get out of there. This, this must be what Revan and Malak found when they entered this temple. This must be where their journey down the dark side began. I may have my timelines mixed up, but didn't they start down the dark side when they went to war against the Mandalorians? Isn't that when their resentment toward the Jedi began? Wasn't it because the Jedi's refusal to defend worlds from being decimated by Mandalore? I don't know. Again, nerds, help me out here. After that, I figure it's time to handle this whole kidnapping situation and, uh, oh hey, this is evidence exonerating the Mitale family of murdering the Sandral son. I'm sure I'll make good use of that. When I talk to Daddy Mitale, he bribes me to raid the Sandral base, so I happily accept. I am a man of the world, Jedi. I know how things are done. I will make a contribution of a thousand credits to the Council in exchange for rescuing Shen from the Sandrals. I will present the credits directly to you, of course. 
Whether the council ever learns of this donation is completely up to you. Then I go to the Sandral estate and the daughter gives me a key card to the side entrance. This leads to trespassing, theft, countless loss of property, and an overall really fun time for me. And I'm sure this all went just how the Jedi intended. I... I thought you would listen to me. I thought the Jedi were compassionate and kind. I shouldn't have spoken to you at all. Finally, I find the little whiner being held, but he says he won't leave without the girl. If I escape, Nurik will think Rahasia is to blame. Nurik is insane with grief over the loss of his son, Cassus. If I leave with you, it is Rahasia who will suffer. I cannot allow that. She says that she can't wander the halls without her father suspecting her and endangering herself and him even more. If one of the security droids sees me wandering the halls, father will get suspicious. I can't risk it. And it was around this point that I thought, wow, this whole family drama has gone too far. It would probably be better if there was a complete reset in this section of Dantooine. We leave the estate and we're met by two sets of droids in front and behind us. There you are, Shen. Father! Mr. Matale! Rahesha! Father! Mr. Sandril! Nurik! Alan! I try to goad them into fighting each other, but then I start to lose hope when they start apologizing to one another, like... Ugh. But hey, at least Candorous is on my side. I'm glad somebody finally said what we've all been thinking. No, don't! This... this has all gone horribly wrong somewhere. Alan, what can we be thinking? How could we have let this go this far? We are at each other's throats now, fighting over our children's lives when they are old enough to live their own. Oh well, if you want something done right. Hey, what? No, no, I never did anything to your son. I, I knew you were lying, you dog. I just think I thought it might not have been you. So I'll take your son from you. Father, no! Don't do it! Die! Shen! Die! Yeah! No! Raisha! I'll kill you! The master has been injured. Terminate all opposition. Destroy the invaders! By the way, I take zero responsibility for this. The council knew the risk of sending me to handle this. They know who I am. Bastila told them about my actions on Terrace. I answered all of their questions in the most brash way possible, and they know I've been nothing but arrogant and deceitful toward them. This is on them. I mean, look at the way I handled Juhani. What did they expect? At some point, you have to recognize that your rescue dog is just too dangerous to others, and you have to put him down for the safety of everyone. When I get back to the Enclave, I give him a rundown of everything that happened at the temple. Or rather, I tell them that nothing happened, but they call me out on it. Lies. Bastilla has already told us about this Starforge and the map you found. But then I get the pleasure of lying to them some more about my involvement with the Metali Sandral feud. There has been a report of a terrible battle near the Sandral estate to the south of the Enclave. Apparently, a large force of droids attacked the estate. The defending droids returned in kind. The attacking family was apparently the Metali family, launching an attack on the Sandral estate. Both entire families were slain including the boy Shen, who had been reported missing. There was a mention that someone noticed one or more other persons leaving the battle area after the conflict had finished. You were in that area, were you not? Did you see something? Is that so? I cannot find fault with your statement, but something in your manner is odd. I cannot prove anything, but I have my suspicions. I will keep my eye on you, Padawan. Perhaps it was Mandalorian raiders, or a feud that got out of control. And with that, they send me on my way to save the galaxy. It's now all up to me to stop the Sith from using this all-powerful weapon that really no one knows about, and to absolutely use it for good and not bad. I'm sure nothing can go wrong, but where should I go? Stay tuned and find out next time.
Anyways, so that's Dantooine. It's a pretty short planet. There's not a ton. So I guess I should go ahead and give a ranking to it. Again, it's not a bad planet in my opinion. The Mandalorian hunt and the other side quests make it engaging for the most part. But the main quest, it's pretty boring. It's just fighting the fallen Jedi and like two droids than answering questions about a planet that a 10 year old could answer. Outside of that, you get plenty of opportunity to be pure evil or an outright savior to everyone around you. So I can't really gripe with that. I I'd say this probably belongs in, in the B tier, right behind Terrace. Um, so, yeah.